Hello, it is Sunday, May 31st, 2015, and I am supposed to blog things that I do that are blog-worthy, and I'm here on a Sunday making this. It's a robotic dolly, sort of. It's, uh, it's, it's for moving this little macro dolly that we have, or I guess it's a micro dolly, but I use it, oh, it's a Pico dolly is what's written on it, but I'm using it with the um, microscope, USB microscope, which is a macro camera that will focus on short things. I had this idea a very long time ago to do a electronics lab title with um, a circuit board just really close up, and I'm trying that. And it almost works, sort of. I'll show you the footage that I get with this, but um, basically I'm using little gears going to big... I can see it better from the other side. Little gears turning big gears to get a lot of slow motion, um, or rather a little slow motion with a lot of torque. Or at least a lot of torque as far as connects goes. Um, and as you can see, it's moving. Just a little bit. And the reason that the table is tilted is because I found that I get a smoother movement if, um, if the dolly wants to be going in one direction, which is downhill. Now, something else that occurred to me, which I am going to attempt to implement now, is uh, we have a slider. I forgot that we have a slider now because I, I very rarely use it. It's usually Elizabeth using it. Um, and I should try in implementing that into this instead of using the little skateboard wheels, which might be the cause of some problems, I'm not sure. It occurred to me that I may not have adequately explained why I need mechanical contrivances to make that thing work properly. Um, I can't just dolly it by hand, even with the slider, because it's so close to the subject and the camera is so tiny that um, every little tiny jitter of that my hands make or, or um, the dust on the track or something makes uh, shows up in the video. And you'll see that when you look at, even when I use this thing, it's still um, shaking quite a bit. And if I apply image stabilization, um, it gets a little better, but Still, every little tiny movement registers, and it's only at 15 frames per second video, so I speed it up by two to get the finished one. Um, so it has to be a very slow, very regular movement, and I just can't do that with my hands, even though people keep telling me I'm a robot. Proof. Another thing I may not have explained adequately is why in the world am I making this out of connects when we have a full robotics lab and all that stuff. Connects are what I know. Uh, not quite half of our collection of connects at the Geek Group came directly from me. So when I needed something relatively quickly because I'm really just testing this idea and I'm not like devoting any actual resources to it. That's why I'm doing it on my day off. Connects are the obvious choice because I need a mechanism and I need it to be essentially free and also I want to have fun doing it and connects are inherently fun to me. So that's what's going on with that. It's a tensioner. I found that if the chain has too much slack and it doesn't work properly. So this is my extremely rudimentary <laughs> belt tensioner. 
I guess I don't really need those pieces there. You will notice that I have moved from the table that I had set up to the pile of drywall in the middle of the room. That's because with the use of the slider, I can adjust these knob things on the ends of it and make it um, slanted, give it, a, give it a slope, which I can't do with the pile of drywall, and that's why I have the table, half the table raised. But I don't need that anymore. Even though it does make it slightly harder to make the contraption fit in with the slider than it does to just have the thing rolling on the ground, but maybe I relish a challenge. Probably really hard to tell, but it is in fact pulling it. I think. Oh, shit. Ah, what? It's, it's moving in jerks. You may have noticed that I am using a conduit clamp to fixture our extremely high-end macro cam here. The mount that it comes with is actually pretty good for holding it in one specific position, but adjustments, especially minute adjustments, are kind of impossible. And that's a piece of uh, bicycle inner tube so that I can have the metal not slide around all over the place on the plastic. But what I'm using is the same head that we use for a variety of purposes, most notably time lapse. It's just one of the little slick heads. And I'll take that. There we go. And it interfaces quarter twenty with our uh, uh, slider head. Interfaces with the slider head. Now, I might have done a stupid thing here, because I don't know if I can actually get the, with all of my extra stuff that I have attached to this. Well, maybe. I don't know if I can get the subject close enough to the macro cam to actually see it. Because this has a really shallow depth of field, for obvious reasons. The gears, instead of making one smooth, continuous move, are ticking. I don't know if you can tell because my hand's shaking too much, but even when the thing is super defrictionized because it's on a slider, it's um, it's only moving in increments. Even though the gears themselves are moving smoothly, like. This is moving smoothly, but these are not. Wait a minute, this is moving smoothly and these are not. Okay, so maybe they're tick-tocking between their, uh, there's too much movement within the, okay. So there's movement within the stupid, uh, I have a way to correct for that. I suppose. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, it's nearly 10, which means I should go home and I should clean this up first. Um, anyway, nearly 10, and I rebuilt the gearbox. So that's, that's a terrible angle to look at it from. Okay, rebuilt the gearbox. Can you tell I'm using the Averio for this uh, blog. I'm going to switch back to the half-broken blog cam that we usually use because at least it has a wider field of view than this. My zoom I'm zoomed all the way out and that's all the wider it goes. Anyway, um, <clears throat> rebuilt the gearbox to be slimmer because the even though I'm using the Kinex rods that they provide you with, they're um, supposed to not bend as much as the regular rods do, and you're supposed to use them for exactly these tasks, but um, it's a toy at the end of the day, so <laughs> it's, it's not built for the kinds of things I'm using it for. Um, but basically, I, I, I arranged the gears so that the drive 
for the chain is directly on the mechanism that is pulling the chains, as opposed to before it was further along the axle. And when I power it up, Again, it's kind of hard to fucking see. I'm gonna stop swearing in the blog, but it is moving steadily, slowly. So the next step is to get some footage with it. It's definitely working, at least as far as I can tell. It's still a little jerky, but um, as I mentioned earlier, it's 15 frames a second, so that might be why it looks jerky. Plus, um, I think it captures faster than it can actually refresh in the app. It's, it's a glorified webcam app, is what the uh, capture software that comes with this camera is. I mean, it does the job even though it captures to an AVI that's a little bit weird and sometimes our editing software doesn't like it. So in theory, I should be able to show you guys the footage I've been shooting. I haven't actually tried yet, but uh, I'm going to do a few more captures and this should be cool. Now for some reason, it handles uphill rather well. But downhill, which I thought would be the smoother one, is the one that jitters all over the place. I am sure there is a mechanical reason for this, but I don't know what the hell it would be. You may recognize these boards, by the way. I didn't mention this. I, I've had a circuit board sitting on my desk for ages that I was going to use for this, but then we took apart... Um, I don't even remember what we decided the box was for, but it was some kind of um, aerospace device on, a, on an equipment autopsy, and there were all these really pretty boards inside it. Uh, and when you have pretty boards, you might as well shoot pretty video of the pretty boards. But as you can see, the, the, the clips that I'm hoping I can put in the blog for you guys make it look like these things are huge, but this whole pan is taking, or it's not a pan, it's a dolly. It's a track, I guess. Anyway, this whole thing is taking only a few inches. And I'm a little proud that it's working as well as it is. I'm sure there are more refinements that I can think of. Maybe we can replace the connects with an actual rig of some kind, like, you know, something from the robotics laboratory downstairs. But for now, I'm pretty happy with this.